Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Turn with me if you would. Does everyone have a Bible? If you don't have a Bible, uh, the team in the back, can you put scriptures up on the screen? I'm always one that loves to have the scripture. We have to see what the word of God says. It doesn't matter what a preacher gets up and preaches if it's not the word of God. Amen, Amen someone? We are going to go to Matthew 13 and 24. So if we can get that up. Matthew 13 and 24. And that's the text that we'll, we'll preach from today. Matthew 13 and 24. And I'll have a few other scriptures that we'll go to. I'm a teacher by trade, so allow me to teach and preach at the same time, but allow me to teach this word. Amen. Matthew 13 and 24 says, Another parable put he forth unto them. This is Jesus saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Someone say good seed. Good seed. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares. Say bad seed. Bad seed. Somebody say weed. weed. Among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence has it these tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. Yes, yes. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. So true, so true. Let both grow together Amen. until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together, first the tares, somebody say weed, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Amen. You may take your seats. And as you take your seat, turn to your neighbor and give them the title of message, the seed and the weed. The seed and the weed. Now for my smokers out there, it's not the seed and weed you're thinking about. We, go, we, we ain't talking about that kind of weed, and we're not talking about that kind of seed. Amen, someone? Amen. The seed and the weed. It's important to understand when we're talking about the seed, the seed has many different meanings. One of the things we see with the seed, a seed is a plant and inside of that plant, you'll see something which is an embryo, and that embryo actually has what would be a seed in it. Uh -huh. What I want to talk to you about is going to be the seed today, and it's going to be very relevant, because what I saw was God was saying that I gave seed to the bishop many years ago, and he started that seed by planting a ministry, by ministering. So the seed that God gave him is the genesis or the very beginning or the nucleus. Whenever we talk about a seed, we're talking about the beginning of something. Amen, someone? And when you talk about the beginning of something, God gives that to you at an early stage. Many of you have seeds that have been planted in you. Some have been planted by God, but then an enemy comes and also plants seeds as well and we're going to talk about that amen someone but we honor bishop for all the years that he's been in ministry him and the first lady and we thank god for what god has given them and here's what the lord was sharing with me he shared this every man after you have put so many years man woman you put so many years into something there comes a time where you feel like have everything i've done is this in vain have I done something in vain? The seed that God has given me, why am I looking out and not seeing the exact vision that God gave me so many years ago? Why is it that when I stand up, it seems like the thing that I saw from the beginning is not necessarily what it is that I'm looking at now? And so as God was ministering that thing to me, I began to see it in the word and I said, okay, God, help me, help me, show me exactly what it is that you're saying to the man of God. And what God was saying is he wanted to encourage you bishop because the seed that he showed you the seed that he gave you that vision from the very beginning he said that it's not it's, it's tearing 
It's tearing. It shall come forth, but it's just tearing. It's waiting a while. It shall come forth. And he showed me two different seeds. There's a spiritual seed. Someone say spiritual. And then there's the natural seed. The natural seed we'll see is there's three people that I would say are here that are the natural seed. All right. Um, I believe you had actually four. You got Mike and then you've got your older son, which is Melvin. And then you have Mark, and then there's Melvita. Amen, amen. So what I was seeing is, here it is that all of his children are in the ministry. One has gone on to be with the Lord, but every one of them were in the ministry. In other words, every one of them carried the weight. They carried the glory. They carried the vision that was in the man of God. So that's the first thing that God said. He said that they are carrying that very thing that was in you, the thing that God gave to you. They carry it. They carry it now. Then the second thing is, there's something that has to happen with us. There's the response of leadership. There's the response of the body. Amen. And then there's a third response. And we're going to talk about this. So why Watch this. In the very beginning, God stood out on nothingness and he spoke into existence everything we see. God said, let there be light. And it was so. God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together onto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Everything that God said, somebody said, it was so. So when God spoke something, it came into existence. Everything that God spoke and everything that he said manifested. What I want to show you is the word that God spoke is a seed. Somebody say seed. The Lord said, by wisdom has he founded the earth. By understanding has he established the heavens. The wisdom and understanding that God uses from the very beginning is encapsulated in a seed. If we look at the scripture in Mark 4 and 14, the Bible says this. It says, Jesus says the sword went forth to sow seed and he, the seed that he sowed was the word of God. So the sower went forth and he sowed the word of God. Watch this. When he sowed the word of God, that word of God is a seed because he's sowing it. Amen. If you're sowing something, then that means it's a seed. The same way when you bring your money and you sow, you're sowing into something. That is a seed. Now, we know that John 1 tells us in the beginning was the what? The word. And the word was with God and the word was what? It was God. Everything that was made was made by who? The word. So now if he sowed the seed and the seed is the word and we know that the word is the seed. Let me give you this. Jesus is actually the seed. He is the chief seed. Anytime we see Jesus, we see the seed. So when the sower goes forth to sow, he sows the word of God. The word of God is the seed. So it makes it clear the word is the seed and the seed is the word. When God spoke in Genesis, we have the word speaking words. We have the seed sowing seeds. The seed is what we say, just like the seed is what the Lord says. Just like God spoke and created, so too we have to speak and create. That's why during offering time, you began to decree and declare. The Bible says you shall what? Decree a thing and it shall be established. We have to speak and say those things that we want. We have to say those things that we're looking for. See, one of the responses of the congregation is to speak. When the bishop or when somebody's preaching or ministering, the word there's a response that comes back amen somebody we have to speak those words watch this words are thoughts clothed in language and the clothing of those thoughts are power so when God says I know the thoughts that I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil peace to give you an expected end. God's thoughts are also his words. Those words are clothed or his thoughts are clothed with language. So it's almost like a seed can also be seminal fluid. We know that a man impregnates a woman, right? It's with his seed. I'm going to keep it PG. Amen. I'm going to keep it PG. But it's with his seed. The same way what we speak is also our seed. So there's something that God is trying to show us. Words are thoughts clothed in language. Watch this. 
Have you ever read that poem and it's true, it's almost biblical. It says, watch your thoughts because your thoughts become your what? Your words. Then you must watch your words because your words become your what? Your actions. Then you watch your actions because your actions become your habits. And then your habits become your character and your character manifests into your destiny. So you have to go all the way back to the genesis of that thing, which is your thoughts, but they have to be enclosed with language, which then brings the power of the seed. See, the reason God didn't make the thoughts to be the seed is because many times you'll have wicked thoughts that'll come. And so he won't empower it. It only gets power when you begin to speak it. When you speak that thing, that thing begins to have power. So when things come into your life, one of the things that God wants to do is challenge you not to speak everything that comes into your head. Amen. Amen. Somebody say seed. Seed. This is how important the seed is. The Bible clearly tells us that unlike any other created being, only we humanity have been created in the image and the likeness of God. God blessed us with dominion, authority, and power. But there's one thing that God said that he gave us. Someone turn to Genesis. Grab your Bible. Turn to Genesis 1 and 27. Let me show you this. Genesis 1 and 27. Genesis 1 and 27. And Genesis is the beginning. So Genesis would be the seed. You can find the whole gospel in Genesis. So it says here, are we there? Somebody say amen. amen. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God blessed them. You see that? He blessed them. Watch the next verse. And God said, behold. Someone say behold. Behold. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding what? seed. To you it shall be for me. In other words, God blessed them, but when it came time to give him something, he gave them seed. He gave them seed. Of all the things that he could have given them, he blessed them, he spoke over them, but what he put in their hand was a seed. Yes, sir. Turn to your neighbor and say, all you need, all you need. is a seed. Yes, That's all you need. That's good news, somebody. All you need is a seed because the seed unlocks all the potential, the blessing, the dominion, everything that God says you need, it's wrapped up in a seed. seed. Yes, amen, amen. Yes, it's wrapped up in the seed. The only thing God gave them was a seed because metaphorically speaking, all you need is your seed. Your seed can only produce what it is. If you speak faith, it reproduces faith. If you speak nasty words and nastiness, it reproduces after its own kind. Look at Genesis 1 and 11. So we're here, 1 and 11. And God said, let the earth sprout, now I'm going to read out of another translation. Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, fruit trees bearing fruit according to, limited to, and consistent with its kind, whose seed is in them upon the earth, and it was so. The earth sprouted and abundantly reproduced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind. Somebody say kind. And trees bearing fruit with seed in them according to their kind. See, every seed reproduces fruit according to its kind. And that fruit will contain the very seed that gave it life. In fact, the fruit exists because of the seed and for the purpose of reproducing the seed, not the other way around. So the reason that we have fruit is to reproduce the seed. Tell somebody I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Watch this. We're going somewhere. Bishop, one of the reasons when you look out and you're saying, I'm not seeing everything that it is that I should be seeing, one of the reasons is the response of the seed. One of the things is the response of the seed. When the seed is sown, a sower goes out to sow, the Bible says, and he sowed good seed, and the good seed became wheat. Someone say wheat. Once it became wheat, it says, while man slept, an enemy came and 
tears inside of the field. Here's the revelation. The field is this church as we're looking here. What God gave to Bishop, this is the field. And he sowed good seed all these years. And many, 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 many of the people that are in here are wheat. But we also have tears. We have weed also amongst the wheat. And here's what God does. God says, listen, he wants us as wheat comes wheat needs to cross-pollinate. What's cross-pollinization? Have you ever seen cross-pollinization in plants? What's cross-pollinization? In other words, what's in me needs to get in you. So what happens is I need to magnify God. I need to give my testimony. I need to praise God. When that word comes to you and you receive that seed, if you're not cross-pollinating, then you won't cause pregnancy. Cross-pollination is nothing more than the seminal fluid going to someone else, creating a pregnancy that develops into another piece of wheat. So now you got more wheat. So when I look and I don't see what needs to be seen in the sanctuary, could it possibly be there's no cross-pollinization? We're not pollinating one another. Amen. We're not speaking those things that are being spoken. Even in glory, you have the angels. One angel says, holy. The other angel says, holy. The other angel says, holy. And he says, holy. And they speak it, holy, holy, holy. And what happens? The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of my people. God comes and sits down. Matter of fact, if you ever look at the Ark of the Covenant, you have the two seraphim and the seraphim are facing each other because that's where the conversation, how good God is, how holy God is, how great God is, how magnificent he is. Oh, God is everything. And when you begin to magnify God and you tell some, this is where the rubber meets the road. When's the last time you told somebody about your God, your Savior, Jesus? And if you're not telling someone, then there's no pollinization that's coming. I'm not pollinating. And when I don't pollinate, there's nobody else coming. See, the reason many of us are here is because somebody told us about Jesus. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and what? The word of your testimony. Your testimony is crucial. That's why the enemy wants to shut you up. Because when he shuts down your testimony, he shuts down the field. That's what the enemy's desire is. He wants to shut the field down. And so my wife gave me a pumpkin because I couldn't find any pumpkins, y'all. Because right now is not the season of pumpkins. But, I, but, but I, I've got a pumpkin here. And I want to show you something with this pumpkin. Inside the pumpkin, now if this was a real pumpkin, we would have seeds. And these seeds are pumpkin seeds. So what God does is, God gave Bishop seed, and what Bishop did was, he sowed his seed. He took it and he sowed it, sow it. He sowed it, go ahead Bishop, sow it, sow it. Amen, sow it. He sowed the seed. He sowed the seed. And what happens is God wants us to sow seed. He says, sow your seed. But many times, instead of sowing the seed, they'll say, hey, wait a minute. Hey, let's go ahead and honor the bishop. Matter of fact, I even told uh, 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 Pastor Moffman, I said, listen, everything that's taken up in the offering goes to bishop. I don't want a thing. He said, you're sure? I said, absolutely. Because I brought my own seed to sow into bishop. I don't want your money. I don't need not a doggone dime because God's been good to me. And what happens is many times you have preachers or whoever else that are wolves in sheep clothing that are eating people's seed and the purpose of that is to just to make the flock no longer believe in the seed because Jesus is the seed so they do it to dishonor so let me just say it up front I don't want anybody's nothing I came to give you what God has given me God said take the seed sow the seed but what we do is we start looking at our circumstances circumstances and you know what we do so we eat our seed instead of sowing our seed God gives you some seed to eat he 
he showed it to them. He gave them some for food. But all of your seed is not meant to be consumed upon your own self. God always thinks about others. That's why he says pollinate. That's why most of the times you can see the gifts in somebody else, but you can't see them in yourself. Why? Because God says, you can't see you. Your eyes are in your head, so you can see everybody else but you. Because it's based on, you feed me and tell me, man of God, I see this in your life. Oh, I receive it. Woman of God, let me tell you what I see the Lord doing in your life. Ah, she receives it. God don't want you eating, eating your own seed. Your seed is for somebody else. Y'all want Bible? Turn with me. I'm going to show you the Bible right here. Amen, Bishop. Can I go ahead? I'm sorry about putting all this in. Watch this. Go to 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. It's always about the word of God. I'm passionate about this because guess what? There was a time I knew nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ. And somebody came and gave me a testimony. Somebody gave me a seed. And that small seed has grown to what you see now. Amen. That seed has grown. The same way that Bishop is sowing seed, the seed grows. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Are we there? Uh-huh. That's it. Y'all with me? Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food. Y'all see that? So he gives me some so I can what? Eat bread for my food. What's the next thing? He multiplies your seeds some. Wait. Does your bread get multiplied or does the seed that is sown get multiplied? So anytime you sow your seed, it gets multiplied. It ain't when you eat your seed. You wondering why you don't have enough? You don't have enough because you ain't sowing. God said, I will multiply every seed sown. And then he says, I will increase the fruits of your righteousness. So your seed is tied up with your righteousness as well. Jesus. It's spiritual. It's natural. It's natural. It's spiritual. Jesus is the seed. He's a seed or the seed that speaks seeds. He is the word that speaks words. So Jesus sows what he is. But an enemy comes in the field when we sleep, when we're not on post, when we're not praying, when we're not on watchmen on the wall watching, because the adversary says, I cannot allow Bishop to continue to create wheat in the house for that wheat goes out into the greater field and harvests and makes more wheat and then there's more and more wheat. So I have to do something. I have to sow. I have to sow something that's like me. Watch this. The Lord showed me, and I read it. I do a lot of reading, a lot of studying, and things like that. Here's one of the things we find in Genesis. Let me go to the chapter, because I know it in my head, but I want y'all to see this. Watch this. The Bible says, while the earth remains, seed time harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The, while the earth remains, seed time harvest. Seed time harvest seed time harvest while the earth remains seed time harvest we get caught up sometimes in the issue of time I've sold my seed and now I feel like I ain't got nothing this don't work well what you don't see is there's time that takes place there's seed, there's time, then there's harvest. Could it be that when we do so, some of the issues that we're having is we're not waiting for the proper time to receive the harvest? And then guess what the enemy does? When we sow our seeds of faith, when we sow our seeds and speak right things, and you're saying, my harvest is gonna come. Checks in the mail, checks in my hand, checks in the bank account. Then we go home and we don't see a check. And when I don't see a check because I don't allow time, now I start, I knew that didn't work. I knew it wasn't going. And the enemy, said, the enemy is the one that watches over the words. 
he is the accuser of the brethren so he goes before God and says listen they spoke this thing so I have an obligation and a duty to bring it to pass because they're speaking doubt I can bring doubt and lack into their life and because we speak it it is so so what happens is we allow the time it's better to say nothing at all it's better sometimes you need to just shut up tell yourself just shut up stop saying everything you think everything you think is not from God every thought that comes into your head is not a godly thought come on somebody how many times does something come into your head you like where'd that come from you sitting in there listening to a word and next thing you know you thinking about something that you know you shouldn't be thinking about you know why it's not you you've got an enemy and your enemy begins to sow seeds into your head because he wants you thinking about oh girl oh dude he wants you thinking about Man, I'm tired of all these preachers. Whatever it is, the enemy will speak those things to get you off focus. God wants you focused on the word. He wants you focused on what your faith is, what God has spoken to you. Stay focused on the seed, the word. Amen, somebody? Now watch this. Let me take you into Genesis. I want to show you something. Watch this. In the parable in Matthew 13, the issue was while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears. If we go back, the parable teaches us there's in fact not just the seed of the Lord, but there's also the seed of the enemy. All right, there's a seed of the enemy. If you remember after Adam and Eve fell in the Bible, the God said, I'll put enmity between the serpent and the woman and between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Watch this. God told Adam in the garden to do what? He told him to dress it and keep it. Now, in studying the word in keeping, keep is the Hebrew word that means to guard it. The theologians have said that it is because he was to keep out and beware of who? The serpent. We know that. This is true, and additionally, the serpent's goal was just for us to eat from his tree. Now, watch this. We know in the scripture what James 1 says, that God doesn't tempt us with evil. Why then do we see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden? On the outset, at a quick glance, you would think that God is tempting us with evil. I mean, wait a minute. God says, I don't tempt you with evil. But then we see in the garden, we see the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right in the midst, it says. Watch this. Let's go to the scripture, Genesis 2 and 8. We're going to look at the scripture. And bear with me because I like showing it in the word. Instead of just speaking it, let's look at it. Genesis 2 and 8. And it says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Keep going. Verse 9. And it says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Stop right there. Where did God grow in there? Every tree that's what? Pleasant to the sight and good for food. Then it says, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Stop right there. Is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil good for food? That's the right answer. No. So then how do we have, the Bible says that God himself, it said he planted every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now we have a tree that's not. It's always been taught to me, well, God made both of them and he was testing them. But the Bible says God doesn't test us with evil. So when God told them to guard the garden, could it be so? Could it be the reason he had them guarding it was not only because of the serpent, but because the serpent was coming with something that was like him, which is a seed. Because the seed of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil bears fruit. And they ate the fruit. And we know that every fruit has seed. Because the purpose of the fruit is for the seed. So here's what I'm saying to you. When they ate the seed, understand this. Adam and Eve, God took them and put them in a garden. Do you not know that we are also gardens? We are gardens that was placed in a garden. 
So the enemy's desire is, I need to put a seed in you. Just like them thugs that ain't up to no good, that get with a good church girl and try to put a seed in her. That's the same thing that the enemy's trying to do. He wants to put his seed. Why? Because then it causes you to be attached to something that you should have never been attached to. You're now with something that should have never been with you. That's the purpose of the seed. How do we know the seed? Did the seed take root? Yes, it did. Because when Eve gave birth, she gave birth to Cain and Abel. Cain was of the what? wicked one. The Bible says Cain was wicked and he slew his brother. The very tree of the knowledge of good and evil did what? It procreated good and evil. And that was the issue. Now you've got good and evil working in mankind. You look at Abraham. Abraham had two sons. Esau and who? Isaac. Isaac was the son of promise. Esau was not. Esau looked to destroy his brother and he got cast out with his mama Hagar. The seed continued to perpetuate. See, that's what the enemy wants to do. Even in us, this is what the Lord began to show me. He said, when you look at the field, Bishop, and you're looking in the field, the problem with us as saints is the enemy comes and he puts his seed in us. And here's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that particular seed. What I'm talking about is we start dealing with things. He starts speaking things. And next thing you know, we start doing stuff that's lustful. Now I'm dealing with lustful things. Now I'm dealing with, dealing with gossip. Now I'm, you, matter of fact, if you ever bring a gossiper into the church, Bishop, if you ever want to know who gossiping, bring a gossiper in the church, let them visit, and who they click up with, that's how you know. Who they click up with, you want to know if somebody's spiritual? When they come into the church, they click up with the spiritual ones. You want to know if someone's a fornicator? When they come up to the church and now they click up with the people that are, you can find. Be, why? Because spirit tries the spirit. Spirit knows the spirit. And your spirit will attract to the same kind. Like spirit attracts to like spirit. So the enemy comes to sow seed that's not godly seed because what it does is it causes us to start having fruit that's commingled. Watch this. Oh, I got to show it to you. It's in Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy, I think it's 22. I, I got to show it. I got to show it to you. Is somebody getting something out of this? Amen. Someone getting something out of this? The Garden of Eden. Okay, watch this. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, and we talked about it. And also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we talked about what was happening. One of the reasons that the church is in the field to overflow is because we have tears amongst us. How do you identify those tears? We identify the tears by bringing them. If they're in the house, you see them click up together. If you have someone that continually sows discord among the church brethren, using their seeds of gossip, envy, jealousy and spite they might be a tear amen they might be a tear because even the enemy is the accuser of the brethren he's always talking about someone if you have someone always talking against leadership they may be a tear amen if a member is living in continuous unrepentant outwardly significant sinful lifestyles that may be a tear now we all have some sin but if you're living continually in blatant, outright sin, unrepentant, I don't care what the pastors say, this how I get down, that's a tear. And the reasons the tear come is because tears begin to sow seeds into wheat. And as they sow their seeds and they sow, it's all right. So what you sleeping around with Johnny? Everybody do it. It's cool. It's cool. We in a new day and age. People say that, a man can't be with a man, a woman can't be a woman. You crazy. This 2018, we can do what we want. 2019, we can do what we want. Look at what the laws say. Okay, you keep going with that. Yes, sir. Keep going with that. The truth, y'all, is the truth. No matter what society says, the Bible, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We can't change the word of God because of the laws or because of anything else. You got to stand on truth. Don't let somebody take you to hell. Don't go to hell. Matter of fact, if you're going to go to hell, don't go from the church. At least be in the club. At least be where you want to be. 
But don't go to church sitting in the, or go to hell sitting in the pew. Right. For real, if I'm going to hell, I'm going to California. Knows how to party in the city. Well, hey, if you're going to go to hell, then go to hell doing what you do. But don't deceive yourself. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell it. It's the truth. I know it hurts, but it's the truth. Watch this. Deuteronomy 22 and 9. Let's look at that. Deuteronomy 22 and 9. Amen, somebody. It says, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with divers seeds, lest the fruit of your seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of your vineyard be what? As I studied it, what God was showing is when there's two different types of seed, the field becomes cursed. And you know what they do? They burn it. They burn the whole field. Wheat and tares. Tares and wheat. So this showed and illuminated why the enemy tries to show so tears because what he's trying to do is destroy everything, Bishop. He wants to destroy it all. He tries to sow those seeds so that everything is destroyed. The enemy desires for us to eat his seeds so that we are no longer like the most high, but we're like him. Now watch this. The Bible says that an enemy placed bad seed in the field and when the blade sprang up, then it brought forth fruit. The angel said, shall we pluck up the weed, the tares from the field, which are commingled with the wheat? He said, no. Watch this. Here's why. The Bible says the wheat and the tares, he says, let them grow up together. Here's the revelation on that. Why would we not just pluck the, wheat, the tares out? If there's tares in here, why don't we just go and pluck the tares out? It says, let them grow together. Here's what the Lord began to show. Because when you are young, See, it says, let them grow up. And then at the harvest, harvest represents maturity. Somebody say maturity. Someone say maturation. When you become mature, guess what you do? When I was a child, I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. I did what? Childish things. But when I became a man, full grown, what did I do? You put away childish things. This is the revelation. We have tear-like tendencies when we're growing, y'all. I said we. How many of us have done some things this week that we know we shouldn't have done? You know why? Because we've not come into full maturity. So when you're a child, as you're growing, some of us aren't children, some of us are teenagers. There's different levels of development, and I'm not talking about age either. You can be 80 and still developing, and you can be uh, 20 and you're full grown. See, what happens is the enemy wants us to go ahead and pluck up the tares, and they said what? Not so. Let's plucking up the tares, you pluck up the what? The wheat with it. Because if you do that and you come down hard, you start losing people that are wheat. Can I say this to you? Have you ever felt like a tear? I can say I have, absolutely. I can say I battle with that sometimes. Are you wheat or are you a tear? God, how many of us have dealt with sin that's been bothering you and constantly coming back up in your life? I'm a real preacher, I talk about real things. Some of you deal with pornography, sexual sin, and it keeps coming up over and over again. And you start feeling like some of us is alcohol, some of us is gambling. Some of us is a problem with our mouth. We can't, we, we always gossiping, always talking crazy. There's so many different things that we deal with. And the thing that God is saying is, listen, those things, those tears that are growing up in you, I need to bring you to a place where we can take those out. Not cast you out, but take them out. The Lord showed me. He said this in Ezekiel. He told him this, behold, I've given you, he says, I put you over nations and kingdoms. He said to root out, to pull down, to throw down, to destroy, to build, and then to plant. Watch this. Here's what he said, to root out. Why? Because the first thing that needs to happen is we all need rooted out. There's some things in us that needs to come up by the root. There's some things in us that we're dealing with. Somebody say rooted out. There are things in our lives that have to be rooted out. We keep 
cutting the grass or cutting the head off of it, but it comes back up because it's not rooted out. He says, I put you over the nations to root out and then pull down. Why pull down? Because I have to pull down every high thing that exalts itself over the knowledge of God. See, the fields that are in your life, there's the field of the heart and then there's the field of the mind. You are a field. The enemy sows seeds in your thought life and he sows seeds in your heart. Have you ever done something that you knew in your head you shouldn't do, but your heart wanted it so you did it anyway? Come on, somebody. Some of us hooked up with the wrong people because we knew in our head I should not hook up with that joker. But what did we do? We hooked up because our heart was like, but I love her. I love him. And we hooked up with him. Knowing we shouldn't have hooked up with him. Why? Because of the heart. See, the heart and the mind are two different things. And then there's other times where in the mind, the enemy sows a seed in your mind and you run with that seed in your mind because of what's here. Because he's putting, so there's a taking every thought captive to what? The obedience of God, the obedience of Christ. We have to take those thoughts captive. Amen, somebody? Are you getting anything today? Amen, amen. Like I said, the Lord allows me to teach the word. I I teach the word and I want you to grab a hold of it. This is not a game. This is real. If you've got things that you know that's in your life that you need to be uprooted, you need things to be cast down, to be pulled down. If you know those are the things that you need in your life, there's good news. There's a word here for you today. We will pray. We will lay hands. We will agree with what the word of God is for your life. Amen, someone? Watch this. The Lord said to say, some of you here are seed, and some of you, the problem is not the seed. Some of it is the seed. If you're going through a dark situation, you feel like life is just pressuring you, and you feel like everything is over the top of you, and that you can't handle it, and there's so many things just pushing you down, and you feel overwhelmed, and you feel like you're in a dark place, the reason that you're in a dark place, the reason that you're overwhelmed, the reason that things keep piling over and over and over you, and you feel like you're pressed down into a grave, the reason is because seeds must be buried. As a seed, you must go down into the ground. You must be buried. You're having things that overwhelm you. Some of you, you're saying, well, what's overwhelming me is my wife or my husband. They drive me absolutely nuts and crazy. But God is trying to kill you. Because when you die, see a seed, it says, let a seed fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. See, in your death, Dying to yourself. That's when resurrection power comes. Did we not see it with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? When Jesus laid down his life and died, then the church was born. It was dying to himself that the church came up. Some of us, we're going through, we're dying. You feel like you're in a pit, but you are in a pit. The reason you're in a pit, Joseph, is because there's resurrection life in you. Joseph, you're in a pit because you are going to raise up your family. Your family needs you. Some of us, there's deliverance that's in your hands and God is crushing you and God is breaking you and God is putting you in a pit. Oh, David, David, you are in the cave of Adullam. But as you're in that cave, in that darkness, mighty men, mighty women, there are people that are coming out and coming to you because you're being crushed. You're being buried. Everything seems to be over your head. But that's the purpose of a seed. As a seed, it's got to die. You think that it's the enemy, but it's God. That's right. That's true. Yes, amen. And then the other one is this. If it's not the seed, some of you, it's your soil. It's your soil. Bishop sows good seed. But your soil's not right. Your heart's not right. So the seed falls on stony ground. I'm sowing my seed. It's falling on thorny ground. Stony ground. Pastor Mothmer, Bishop, everyone's sowing seed. But what, guess what? Your life looks the same. Anybody life still been the same since you've been here? Ain't nothing changed? Could it be that it's you? Could it be that it's not the leadership? Could it be that it's you? Let a man examine himself. That's what the words say. Let a man examine himself. 
We do a lot of what? Well, Bishop, da, da, da. Uh, he ain't give me the word where I need it. A uh, pastor, blah, blah, blah. They ain't this or uh, they ain't praying like I need them. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't. Because when you come to the Lord on that day that you die, guess who he's going to ask an account of? It ain't going to be Bishop. It ain't going to be pastor. He is going to say, what did you do? with what I gave you. We all got to stand before God by ourselves. Every one of you, old and young, every one of us must give an account. And the Bible says, help us to number our days. We have to give an account. We have to give an account. So the soil, watch this. There's four types of soil. One's the good soil. One's the stony soil. Some of us, we have offense in us. We're offended. And when we get offended, we can't receive the word. We have to get rid of that offense. There's a coming to the altar. In the old days, the tearing at the altar, the coming to the altar to get it right, that's right. That's good. There's a place at the altar where we got to get right before God. It don't matter what I look like or what someone up here looks like. You know what you're dealing with. You know to come down to the altar. Get on your knees. Yes, we got to pray and ask God to deliver us from some things. Amen, somebody? What is it that I'm dealing with? The cares of the world the deceits of riches, the lust of other things. Those are the ones that are dealing with stony hearts. Then it says here, watch this. It talks about the thorny soil. Thorny soil is soil that has thorns or weeds in it. That's the one I just talked about, saying that we need to come so we can uproot some things. We can pull some things out so that your garden is full, that you only have the right things in the garden. And finally, there's the wayside soil. Soil that is not where it's supposed to be is soil that's on the wayside. Whenever a sower goes forth to sow seed and the seed is on the place that he needs to walk to get to the field, that soil is not in the right place. You know what they call that soil? It's called dirt. I looked up dirt. Dirt is something that can't produce life that's out of place. Dirt is the same thing as soil, but it's under your fingers, but it's on my clothes, so it produces nothing because it's soil that should be in the right place to receive the seed of God, but guess what it did? It did a prodigal, and it walked away, and it went somewhere else. God is saying, return. Those of you who know that you've left and the world is speaking to you, the lust of the world, you feel you love what's going on out in the world, guess what? We either are hot or cold. When you're lukewarm, this is what happens. You get what? He spews you out. Guess what? Lukewarm have two different seeds in you. If you've got the seed of the Lord and you also got the spirit of the world operating in you, that's why you don't pollinate. You ain't telling nobody about Jesus. You're not doing any of those things because you have two seeds in you and the field is unclean. My petition to you today is this. Jesus is that tree of life. Jesus is the seed. And he says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, what did he tell you? He's, yes, watch this. You want to bear fruit? Guess what? Guess who bears that fruit? It says the spirit of Christ. Guess what? He's the fruit of what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. All those are the fruits of the Spirit that we see in Galatians. And it all comes from the seed. Somebody say seed. seed. Amen. This is what I'm going to have you do. If you know that you're struggling with something, if you know that there's things that you have, don't look to your right or left. If you know that you're a soil that needs to get back in place, if you know that you're a soil, that your heart is stony, that, that there are things that need to be uprooted and plucked up out of your life, don't hesitate to come. Because the water are trouble. I'm going to go home and I'm going to be okay. But if you know God is speaking to you, if you know that you are wheat and there are some tears that's in your life that you need to have them pulled up, pulled down, if you know that's you, I'll say come.